Computers are everywhere, and even when they're not there, we can take them with us in the form of a laptop, a cell phone, or a wearable. They're in every part of our life. Now, no doubt if you've ever used one of these devices, it's occurred to you that they have to be programmed. And it probably occurred to you that there is a programming language or code that must be inputted into these devices to make them work. You may have heard the calling to go out and learn one of these languages, but it's a pretty confusing and daunting thing to do. You might be asking yourself, why would I do it? What programming language would I start with? And how would I even go about it? Well, if it's confusing for you to think about what you're going to do now to facilitate the future, I'm going to ask you to take a step backwards. In the mid-18th century, as the Industrial Revolution was going on, our economy was based on whatever machines could help us do to make life better. And that lasted for about 100 years. After the Civil War in the United States, this country's economy was based primarily on agriculture. A lot of new immigrants coming in, a lot of people moving west, more mouths, more food needed. And that really only lasted until about the 20th century when manufacturing began to take shape. Think Henry Ford, the assembly line, the Model T. World War II, after World War II, manufacturing really took off and, got, and hit its peak. Even me, I got my first big boy job in 1997 in the manufacturing industry. Now at that time in Washington State where I grew up, that was the number one employer in the state. In 2001, I moved to Mexico to start a manufacturing facility. By 2002, in Washington State, the major employer was the retail industry. By the time I came back to the United States in 2006, economists were already starting to talk about how the United States was moving from a manufacturing-based economy to a service-based economy. And where am I going with this? Well, our economy now is not really based on any one industry. It's multifaceted. We have, still have manufacturing, we still have agriculture, but now we have those service industries like financial services, hospitality, tourism, and medical. And it's important to note that these things all have one thing in common. As tech and technology gets better in our lives, it also affects how all those industries do their thing. And they become more interwoven and connected. And that makes learning a code or a programming language more of a marketable skill. Let me put it in this light. In the early 80s, Walter Ong wrote a book where he describes the impact of literacy on our on the human race, basically. And in there, he suggests that as the e-literacy rates drop, the economy grew. Our comforts in life, our quality of life grew. So here are the facts. In 1900, the illiteracy rate of Americans 14 years or, or older was at about 11%. By 1979, that dropped a half a percent. It doesn't seem like a lot, except that we had the baby boomers. We had a population explosion. So even in spite of all that, the illiteracy rate came down. Now just stop and think what happened in the 20th century. Cars, telecommunications, television, penicillin, heart transplant, x-rays, all these advanced, indoor plumbing. Don't forget indoor plumbing, <laughs> all things. All these advances took place at the same time people were learning how to read. I think coding is going to be that next catalyst to take the human race into the next phase. So coding is another way to say, to help you keep pace with the human race. So now that we know why we want to learn coding, let's talk about what code you want to start with. Now there's not really one method, one agreed upon way to start. You can ask, you can research, all, and all the experts will tell you um, just to start with something. They, they cannot agree on anything. So what I say is, ask yourself what motivates you. At your current job, is moving into a better position or a different department something you want to do? and maybe it's IT related, well ask your IT department what, what languages they're using. Maybe you want that dream job at Amazon, Microsoft, or IBM. They're crazy for people who know something called JavaScript. 
similarly, maybe you just want to make a lot of money. There are companies out there who will pay almost six figures for those who know how to code in something called Java. Maybe you're crazy about your cell phone and all the apps and you think, hey, I could make an app for that. Well, Objective-C is a great platform for, or it's a great language for the uh, iOS Apple platform. Maybe you just want something simple, easy to learn, maybe even kind of cheap. HTML, PHP, and Python are all on the internet. You can download all the learning materials and all the tools for free and get started uh, on a ton of resources. Let me talk about those resources. Now, of course, there are the traditional, well, I won't say traditional, but we're talking about technology, but uh, so yeah, traditional, I think, fits the internet. There are tons of social networks and forums where you can, where there's people helping other people learn software and code. One of those is stackoverflow.com. I love that one. It has tons of different programming languages discussed. If you like spreadsheets on Microsoft Excel, try Mr. Excel. Great, great resource. There are also online schools. One of them is called Code Academy, another is called Core Server, and they're various. And you can learn in a structured environment, somewhat structured environment, for free, and then they also have the option to pay for highly advanced uh, materials. If you're in face-to-face -face learner, there's a somewhat new company called Iron Yard that's setting up campuses across the United States and invite people to come in and pay them to teach them coding. Remember, this is an investment in yourself, so don't get turned off by the payment. Some communities, such as the one here in San Antonio, have community resource centers where you can pay a nominal fee and for a book and go learn introductory, you can take an inter introductory course on programming. But here's my favorite one, and this is one hardly, probably wouldn't have occurred to you. I call it self-study shelf study. You figure out what languages are out there, maybe you'll write them down, on an old-fashioned piece of paper, go down to the public library and see what books they have. Here's one that I have, and it's about PHP and MySQL. I'm actually taking this class online through the university, but I needed the book because I thought it was a great help. But while I was there at the library, I realized, at the public library, I realized that, that there are plenty of other languages, books for other languages there. The um, My Dummies series, or Four Dummies series, excuse me, looks be great a great resource so I would suggest getting one of those books and just taking it slowly so I thought I'll bet by now you thought you'd know exactly which language you would be studying you'd be walking up out of here and thinking I'm gonna go learn Python right now but if you're finding yourself a little bit confused I think you didn't hear what I'm trying to tell you well and this is what it is it doesn't matter what language you learn the idea is you just get up and learn we are blessed to live in a time where our society recognizes everybody as a lifelong learning critter and that it places value on the masses having knowledge because we know it contributes to our quality of life. So just get up, go learn a language, learn as much as you can, if it bores you, you change to another one and eventually it'll start to click and it'll make about as much sense as reading a book does. 